Welcome to my online course. I want to take this opportunity to introduce myself and tell you a little bit about my experience with tapestry weaving. You can always find out more information on my website at www.rebeccamezoff.com. I also write a blog with a lot of information about tapestry and a little bit about my life in the American Southwest. You can find that at rebeccamezoff.blogspot.com. Hi, I'm Rebecca. Welcome to my studio in Santa Fe. I grew up in Gallup, New Mexico, which is a small rural town on the western side of the state on the edge of the Navajo Indian Reservation. My sister and I climbed rocks, played in the dirt, and learned to make things from our parents. New Mexico is a place of many weaving traditions, including Navajo, Hispanic, and Pueblo. My grandparents were also weavers, and I remember my grandfather weaving long lengths of fabric on his 60-inch Maycomber floor loom. I was standing by his side watching the, the sheds change and wondering how I could do that. My grandmother went back to college at 60 years of age and got her bachelor's degree in art. She was the tapestry weaver. Eventually, when I grew up, I made enough money to buy myself a loom and I started learning to weave. I wove fabric for a long time and got interested in double weave and eventually realized when I was trying to make images in double weave that I really wanted to do tapestry. So from Reno, Nevada, I moved home to New Mexico and started taking classes at Northern New Mexico College in El Rito. The program was housed in this beautiful old building and we wove on these standing looms. El Rito is a beautiful town in northern New Mexico in a gorgeous part of the state. I rented a studio in a very old building right on Main Street and I started to weave on my own standing loom. One day part way through my curriculum at Northern New Mexico College, I met James Kohler. He was a master tapestry weaver uh, based in Santa Fe. He brought a beautiful piece and I fell in love with contemporary tapestry technique and knew that that is what I wanted to do. So I dropped out of the program at Northern and started learning from James. I was his apprentice for several years and he unfortunately passed away in 2011. From then, I started teaching, and it has been a blast since then. Um, I weave tapestries, I do some teaching, I'm teaching online now, and I'm so grateful to have all of you here. Um, please ask questions, let's grow this tapestry community. Tapestry is an art form that is not well known in the world, and we need to change that. You can help me. Eventually, my grandparents were no longer able to weave, and I got lucky. They gave me their looms. I now weave all my tapestry on my grandfather's Harrisville rug loom, which is a fantastic piece of equipment. Thanks, Grandpa. I've lived much of my life in northern New Mexico and southern Colorado, and the landscapes of this beautiful area are a big inspiration for my work. The Emergent series of tapestries, of which this is the last one, started with a specific place I was living in Leiden, New Mexico. Um, I moved onto this mesa which was covered with ancient petroglyphs and it became a game for me to hunt all over the mesa for new glyphs and I found them every day. The spiral motif that you see in this series was an, a very important thing to me in a time of great change in my life. I was trying to forge a new identity as an artist and the spiral motif is uh, said to be a symbol of change and of journeying from one world into a new one. I'd like to tell you just a little bit about how I weave. I obviously weave on a floor loom. My grandfather's Harrisville rug loom is my favorite loom to weave on. I also have a macomber that occasionally I do a piece on. I weave on floor looms partly just because of how I learned. My teachers wove on floor looms. I started with traditional Hispanic tapestry, which is woven on standing looms. I weave from the back, so all my designs have to be flipped over. I do this partly because some of the techniques I like to use a lot work better from the back. And again, partly it's just the way I learned. 
We'll talk a little bit more about reasons why you would weave from the front or the back later in the course. I tend to weave all in a line all the way across my warp and use the beater bar on the loom to beat with. This doesn't always happen. Sometimes you're building up shapes to do eccentric wefts or other things and then you have to use a hand beater, but I prefer to use the beater on the loom. It gives me a very nice flat tapestry. The backs of my tapestries are almost completely flat and some of them are almost reversible. I strive for a clean, flat fabric that hangs straight on the wall. My work features a lot of color gradation and to achieve this, I have to dye my own yarn. I love dyeing, it is a great deal of fun. The magic of making almost any color I want is irresistible. So welcome to this online experience. I can't wait to learn what excites you about tapestry weaving and where you get your inspiration. Right.